so let's see are we live now yes no maybe we're back yeah we're back <laughs> So yeah, um, we're back. Let's see now. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, with this artist. Um, uh, the the tip what I gave was the first one. Uh, you watch anime in in what what kind of style you're watching in? Oh, I'm banana. You found out. Oh, everybody already got it. So who is it? Because I really have no clue. <laughs> uh, scroll up a bit. Uh, I don't really see anything. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we have Dub Yuka. Uh, as I mentioned before, I certainly have no idea who this person is. Uh, this is an invite by Hell Fury. Um, yeah, no, uh, no idea. <laughs> so yeah it was for me really difficult to uh to make the sort of announcement as yeah i really had no clue how to do this so yeah and let's see the we have and we have mega cursed mega Cursed, and then the Yuka. So this is who we have so far. Mr. Lonsdale, Discord gave it away. Uh, what's happening on Discord that I don't see? Discord is giving it away. I saw Joe. Oh, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> no, w guy just uh, it's the, the first time at NDXJCL, so we're uh, really excited to hear what w Yuka is, uh, is going to do. So, so far we have Laser Emoto, DGSBZ, oh. uh, TMZ, uh, Dysphasia, oh. uh, I see that I wrote the name wrong, Dys Dysphasia. Mega Curse and Dabuka. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go over to the next track. And this next track is going to be uh, Pianoid with Want Speed. <laughs>
So this one was Pianoid with one speed. So Def Minion, yes, uh, today we are listening to uh, uh, Buchiagi Speedcore. So yeah, it's happy Speedcore stuff. <coughs> Yeah. So yeah, let's go over to the next artist. Um Okay. Um This next artist is also uh, a new one on NDX JCL. Uh also an invite by Hell Fury. But I have known this person already uh, for a couple of years uh yeah w w what can i tell about this person uh this person is way younger than me like really way younger but this person is also a producer uh and what does he produce um this person produces uh yeah more towards the older style music Round with Crusher, nationality, Dutch. But... Uh, no, it's not Neo. I'm not a producer. <laughs> At least not anymore. Uh... No, it's not Banana. Let's see. Um, this person also have some releases on j -Core. Back in the past. Uh, and this person, if, if I'm correct... Uh, let, let me check. Okay, so I, I just saw the CD. Um, Banana, no, it's not Turtle Dome. And uh, Turtle Dome, he uh, doesn't have a release on J-Core. And, and uh, this person has released an, uh, a couple of music on Mob Squad Tokyo. First of all, uh, this person is a Dutch producer. He released a couple of tracks on Mob Squad Tokyo. Like back in the past. And I saw that I also have his CD. <laughs> I think the Ron Wave Crusher would know this person. Um, let's see, to be honest, first I thought it was like another federation of uh, Round Wave Crusher. First of all, how much younger are they from me? Um, I think this person now is like 30, 32. <laughs> well, Crobat, I'll s okay. I, I'll say yes to that, but it, it's not Caster Crusher. <laughs> so yes, we are having Casket Crusher uh, at JCL Primefall. Uh, Casket Crusher is uh, yeah an old school uh, hardcore artist. That has a couple of releases on Mob Squad Tokyo. And just to prove my point. This is release on the Mob Squad Tokyo CD 20. Rougher and Tougher by Casket Crusher. 
So this person, he uh, he has been in the J-Core music already for a long, long, long time. Uh, I tried to get him already uh, several times. Uh, but he never responded to me, but he responded to Hell Fury. So somehow we finally got him. So yeah, Cassius Crusher. Let's see now, then we still can do uh, one more for now. Yes, okay. Oh no, wait, before we do that, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are we in number seven? Yeah. Uh, let's see, it doesn't fit underneath, so cast get. Casket. Is it? What is it? Yeah, crusher. Casket crusher. Uh, let's see. This next artist. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh. This next artist is uh an NDXJCL artist as well. Um. Playing, I think this artist played on free events. No, it's not Neo. <laughs> because I played more than free uh, free events. It's not Nux. It's not Banana. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, well, what can I say about this artist? Um, It's also not Detour. It's also not DJ Plague. Um, and it's also not Jack, is it? It's also not Jimmy. Um, yeah. I, I, what can I mention about this? Uh, no, it's not Crisis. <laughs> uh, it's not Tamilar. It's not Death White. <laughs> it's not Death Minion. It's not Round Wave Crusher. <laughs> Mandible Evangelist, who will guess. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, this artist loves to dash. <laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, Deaf Minion! <laughs> so, we are going to have T Dash or T uh, for uh, JCL Prime Fall. Hashtag Boomercore. Boomercore. So, yeah, uh, our lineup is uh, looking pretty well so far. T dash dash dash. So so far we have Lazy Imoto. Oh wait, I can show the from the start. So we have uh, Laser Imoto. We have DJ SBZ. We are having uh, teams. We have Dysphasia. We have Mega Cursed. We have Dub Yuka. We have Casket Crusher. And we have T dash 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 or T. I need some new dash or old dash. But I also have the dash washing powder. <laughs> oh man. Hundred <laughs> Russian dash color frisch. 
Dreifach formell. <lacht> New show mascot. So yeah, uh, I'll say let's go over to the next track. The next track is going to be Futanari Monzabik with Unfe. <laughs> Nari Mozambique. There we go. So let's see. Let's do another round of artist announcements. So. Let's see. Uh, for the next two. Um. Yeah. What? Uh, oh, what can I say about this artist? <laughs> uh. Is is it a duo? No, it's not a duo. Uh, this person is already around for a long time. <laughs> Oh, man. oh yeah it's uh <laughs> yeah it's uh me of course hashtag boomercore wearing my boomercore t-shirt <laughs> yeah um everybody was already <laughs> guessing who it was <laughs> oh man Okay, for this next one, I tried to, uh, okay, for this next artist, I, uh, I lobbied for this person already quite a long time. I mean, this person is old. I am old. <laughs> 
So, but uh, as I mentioned, this next artist that I, uh, that as I have been lobbying for the for a long, long, long time, uh, and this person uh, always uh, always declined, <laughs> and I was like, why not? Why not? But the the very funny thing is, normally when uh, people decline uh, often. I usually don't, or I usually stop asking this person because it's a waste of my time. But because I believe in this uh, person really much, uh, I, I kept on asking, and finally this person uh, came to be. But the thing is, I'm not allowed to say who it is yet. So for now. We have prime decked it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, as you can see, that th this little being over here, it has been sitting around for a long time. <laughs> So yeah, that is uh <laughs> let's change up. Let's see, where was it again? Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there it is. Xerox and Prime Dactyl. So yeah, um, who this artist is, <laughs> I am not going to say who it is. <laughs> so yeah, uh, whatever you know, you're asking me uh, now, or you're telling uh, who it is, um, yeah, it's uh, you, you have to wait to the event. Well, the, I, I see like uh, some people naming uh, Hellblind. Uh, Mr. Lonzo saying DG combined. It could be funny. First of all, what's your theory? I, li I like to hear the theory. Oh, Spy 47, that is also a possibility. Melon. I haven't thought about it, but yeah, it is a possibility. Yeah. Lonsdale. Candy Core. Uh, no, Candy Core is. Uh, 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 Candy Core has not, has not been out of the, uh, the scene. <laughs> Banana is also not a Versal, because Versal uh, is still active. <laughs> Uh, Rounders crush it away. Now, you know, whatever it is, you are not going to know who it is anyway, because I am not going to tell who Prime Dactyl is. <laughs> for you to know who Prime Dactyl is, that's for you to see on the 24th of June. Hey, Melopo! We're going to take a live one early. Yeah, cool. you Twitch. Hey, I haven't seen you in a long time here. Welcome. Deaf Minion, Evil Minded. Well, that's a name I haven't heard for a long time. <laughs> Round Rave Crusher, you can tell from his face we already mentioned him. Uh, nope. <laughs> Definitely not. So, this is still going to be a surprise. Let's see now. So, while we have these out, out of the way, let's see how many. I want to stop a little bit earlier today, so we still have... Let's go over to the next track, and that is going to be Let's Re with Ultimate Battle.
So that was Lettery with Ultimate Battle. It sounds a little bit like MIDI. MIDI! Well, let's see. Antique. It's Paris Hilton. <laughs> uh, no, I can 100% confirm you that I do not have the money to pay Paris Hilton. To pay Paris Hilton, I need to sell this house <laughs> to be able to afford her for a DJ set. <laughs> that, which is basically plug and play as well, <laughs> what Kim says. Uh, Mint, Blimshin. Well, that would be awesome to get Blimshin here. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go over to the next artist. Oh, wait, it's getting a little bit dark here. So let's switch on some lights. Um, let's see. Combo room. Let's uh, put in the painted sky. So we have to paint this. Let's see. Uh... Hey, Oren! Welcome to Jake Alive One Only. Jake. Talk show here on Twitch. <laughs> Oren, imagine being redacted. <laughs> well, Oren, yeah, you can. Uh... <laughs> you, you can talk about being redacted, right? <laughs> Let's see now. Okay, the next artist. Um Okay. Uh this next artist is uh is new to NDXJCL. Um and is not per re request of Hell Fury. Is um I I spoke to that person and just asked uh, if he uh, wanted to join and he did uh, he did join and uh, the funny thing is uh, when I asked him to uh, to uh, if he wanted to join uh, JCL uh, Primefall he said yes and the next day the person sent his set. <laughs> yeah, for the comic shirt. Uh, what? Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! That that was funny. It is right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the wrong wave crusher um it, it's funny you say that because i i for the second time today i didn't realize but she did show a clue let's see um this person is uh sort of active within the j-core scene And I know that this artist is also a producer. Uh, and uh, what this producer makes, uh, it can be anything. Uh, also has his own uh, record label. Let's see now. Yeah, what else can I say? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not Cabario. Uh, let's see. A couple of months ago, uh, I did a J Core live show. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> 
you did a lot of them. Yes, I did. But this is the funny thing. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. I'm just fighting the whole time. <laughs> so, yes. Uh... <laughs> We have a mo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so. so a couple of months ago we did uh, a show by Mo, and uh, uh, this is one of the, the yeah no, older uh, Jcore uh, producers that really loves Jcore style, uh, and is also the record label of Anything Records. So yeah. <laughs> so Kim, she uh, gave a couple of uh, hints with Mortal Kombat, <laughs> and she. Oh wait, uh, let's see, which release... Mm. Uh... Okay. Shit, what, what, what was uh, the thing called again? Uh, J-Core... Uh, J-Core 1995 to 2015 or so, something like that? Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, okay, this next artist, uh, let's see now, um, what, 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 what can I say about this artist? Uh, this artist is, uh, also, uh, a long time J-Core activist. <laughs> well, technically spoken, this artist always did, uh, did, uh, yeah, whatever the artist wanted. <laughs> what do we want? Gaycore! <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, the same. With Casket Crusher, this artist also has uh, releases on Moth Squad Tokyo. Casket Crusher? <laughs> 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 <Yes. laughs> no, it, it, Casket Crusher is definitely not a uh, split core DJ. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Technically spoken, this artist... Um, Wait, let's see. This artist is already sort of part of NEXJCL, but not under this name. Mm, another tip. No, it's not Neo, because I already got announced. Uh, no, it's not Deshima Sounds. But with another name, yeah. Uh, I also have CDs of this uh, artist, Hayakure Tatsumi. Nope. Uh, Hayakure Tatsumi didn't release on uh, Moscow Tokyo. It comes there. What? Mm. No, not yet. Oh wait, there was a Moscow hint, yeah. Uh, rough sketch is not from Up Squad Toki. Ah, um, uh, rough sketch did release some stuff on Mob Squad Black Label. Uh, technically spoken, technically spoken, it could, but it's not. Uh, I don't know label too well, so it doesn't particularly help me. Um, so We have Shingo DJ Megacurse uh, guessed it right. So 
<laughs> so yeah, um, like I said, technically spoken, this person is sort of affiliated with NEXJCL, and technically spoken, this is also the first under this new name. <laughs> But yeah, we have Shingo DJ. This, uh, especially for this event, I asked Round Wave Crusher uh, if he can uh, come with Shingo DJ because that is part of history. And yeah, really, uh, really, really, really happy to have Shingo DJ on. Yeah, this is Round Wave Crusher, but not. You could have made it fun, Round Wave Crusher, but the other name. <laughs> no, because then people already know. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know, but then people would uh, would know. In 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 a sense. Yeah, but, it's it's fine. They already made. It. <laughs> they already uh, found it out anyway. So yeah. Um. Oh shit. Well, then we have Mo. And then we have uh, uh, Shingo DJ or Shingoj. <laughs> Let's see now. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve artists. Um, let's play the next. Um, no, no, we're not going to play the next track, yeah, because uh, we still have two more tracks to go. Um, let's see now. Um, who do we still have? Now, you know what? Hell with it. So, let's listen to the next track. Uh, the next track is one of my favorite tracks uh, ever. And there's also one that I'm really a fan of. So this is Red Ogre with Zelkova.
So that was Red Ogre with Zalkova. So apparently in this uh, last couple of minutes, uh, Plague, he, he just sat there and he was drawing stuff. And this is what he drew. <laughs> it's me sitting behind my desk with... As you can see, this is my computer that is all lying up and also with the, with the screen over there. That's me sitting behind the screen. <laughs> yeah. And also yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a couple of days ago we, we were, uh, that was Friday, we went to the video game museum. It was Friday? No, it was Saturday. We went to the video game museum, uh, had a coffee and he drew this. <laughs> 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 Jacor. So yeah, um, we have plague over here. So yeah, um, hi there. <laughs> so, Hello. So, uh, well, what is your purpose in life? Uh, to bring the terror. How's so, that? You got that? <laughs> there we go live so everybody can hear it so uh is to bring the terror <laughs> in some respect uh no very good question what is anyone's purpose in life i think that's an always changing uh target so in, uh, in case that you <laughs> want... you know, do you want to keep keep it terror or keep it philosophy no, no, we can do everything let's see uh let's take the I think I need to take the cardioid. Not here. If I take the Omni and a sort of heroes, and then we do figure eight. One, two, one, two. Check, check, check. check Mike, check, check, check. 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 So I, uh, I, I think the microphone now works on both sides. So yeah, um, what are we doing upcoming weekend? Uh, we have Legends of Terror 3, Old School Terror Never Dies, coming to, what's say, Kuhlenberg. <laughs> no, coming not. to, what year are we in? <laughs> Club Broadway, Erp the Netherlands. Be there. Featuring Neo Dash Xerox. Mob. The Impermissible. Uh... Plague vs. Smurf. Mutante. SRB. Neo Dash, Sierra said already. <laughs> and Stinger versus Mobius to make Sting Mob. Yeah, said that. All right. <laughs> I don't, I'm uh, yeah, worried about missing someone now. Yeah, we are missing Hell Creator. <laughs> oh, Hell Creator. <laughs> so, but that is not the only thing what you're doing here, right? I do all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Just riding a bicycle here. That's actually the, the best part. Riding a bike. You want to make a purpose? Riding my bike around Holland. Everything else is just on the way. So it's uh, pretty funny because uh, you, you were here last Wednesday. Hmm? Uh, was it Wednesday? Yeah. Or was it yes, Thursday? Yes, Wednesday. It was Wednesday. So uh, Blake, he wanted to have uh, a bicycle. So after that, we went into uh, Markplatz. So that Markplatz is the, it's like Craigslist, right? From uh, Netherlands. GG. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, to buy um, a bicycle for him. So I was looking around buying a bicycle for how much it was? 80 euros? 80 euros. Um, we looked around at 530. It was 90 euros, but you drove a hard bargain. <laughs> it's not a hard bargain. Yeah. <laughs> he said, all right, look, you're charging 80 euros. We're not going to take that crap. I'm going to tell you this. We're going to be there in five minutes flat gonna give us to it 80 euros he said yeah all right all right we'll do that you're right we're gonna do that because i'm new to xerox <laughs> i don't take no crap i only take j-core <laughs> so um yeah we, we sent a message um the bicycle was 90 euros but it said for 80 euros we mm -hmm. come to pick it up now uh and we'll be there in like uh 10 minutes so we hopped into the car, we uh, go to the bicycle, he liked it, and we drove off. Uh, yep. Of course, he paid. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and while I already made the arrangement, it was 80 euros. and I was pulling out 90. 
<laughs> you almost messed it up. Yeah. But I did save him 10 euros. <laughs> That's how Mark Plus work. Yeah. Squeeze what you can out of them. So, but you also went to uh, another amazing event, right? Who is that? Masters of Watercolor! <laughs> but yeah, no, seriously, it was called Masters of Watercolor, ironically. Uh, because I'm part of a watercolor association in Canada, IWS Canada. And yeah, so I'm representing Canada over here for that. That's the retirement plan. <laughs> Drawing. Well, it helps because everybody there is average of like 75 years old. So, you know, it's good. Uh, got a good 35 years ahead of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a day older than 29. Yeah. Well, for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> So, uh, in, in case uh, that you don't know this, but uh, Plague, uh, he has been uh, one of my uh, mentors since 2010. And at least he doesn't see it like this, but I do see it like this, because um, in 2010 I met Plague through internet. What was it? Was it because I was in Japan? And then it was you were, like, because you went to Japan. Commenting on that? Yeah. Uh, because uh, you went to Japan and I said, oh, awesome, you're going to Japan, uh, hope you like it. And suddenly we, uh, we talk about a lot of stuff and eventually you invited me over to, uh, to the studio, talk a lot, had a lot of dinners. Yeah. Uh, he, um, he is also responsible uh, for my first uh, booking outside of Decima Sounds and uh, still getting invited back, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Oh, I still got to find the original J-Core sample. I'll do that after this. Oh, yeah. that was not even original Jake or sample? No, the well, it was from the trailer for oh, one right. of the. Anyway, while you talk, let me go. Yeah. So, banana, what's with my hair? Yeah. Um, the the thing is, I have fucked up hair. It's like, the, uh, I I call it crime. But this this part over here is always a bitch. It's always like growing upwards. <laughs> So this is sort of my antenna. <laughs> so yeah, as I tried to mention, um, uh, I have seen him as my uh, my mentor in music, and I also learn a lot of stuff from uh, Plague. Uh, also, uh, how to become a better person, it's all thanks to uh, this guy. Was the number four before or after? Yeah. Read that one? Before? I don't think so. I I, I don't know. <clears throat> Where was it? Because I I've been uh, to two. No, I've been to Pink's Horror. No, I I I only think I played at. Uh, well, no, was it in uh, Kulumburg? Or in Tilburg? Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe it was the core. So, that, uh, it, it should be the final birthday of terror. So, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, I learned quite a lot uh, from, from him. And... The, Okay, it's a funny story now, but back then it was not really a funny story. So uh, I booked him for one of my events. Uh, it was actually, is our event because uh, in the original uh, timeline, uh, if he didn't got deported to uh, Canada, is that uh, he was fed up with uh, CSR and with all the hardcore stuff, and I was fed up with Deshim Sounds with all the the soft stuff. Uh, he wanted to go uh, softer, I wanted to go harder. So, uh, then uh, we both created Warp Zone. And yes, Warp Zone is our thing, normally. But he needed to get deported <laughs> back, back to Canada. So, uh, suddenly one day, uh, he sent me a message or he called me. Or, I, I don't know if you called me or you sent a message. But you said that uh, you got deported back to Canada. Well, technically not deported, but told not to come back for at least three months. I did come back after <laughs> two months and a half, though. <laughs> Managed to get back. But um, 
Yeah, in the meantime, though, there was our warp zone thing. So that had to be done without me there. And that's when DJ Imitation Plague played instead. Yeah. AKA DJ Smurf. Yeah. Pulled his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did pull his pants down under Plague. So, yeah. Um, yeah. After that, uh, he he called up or he, uh, he told me that I uh, can't take over the radio show. And I was like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I was then banned for three years. So I couldn't come back to all of Europe for three years. So uh, it was time anyway. It was, you know, vinyl was dying and it was time for a change, at least to rethink strategy. Because, uh, yeah, it was during a very pivotal point. Uh, interestingly enough, Smurf's bookings crashed right after I went back to Canada. And he was just, he was saying, oh, it's because of the new French core DJs coming in. I said, no, it's because I left. That's why. <laughs> but that's up for debate. Well, that is true because my bookings crashed as well after that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're one, one booking. <laughs> The two extra bookings I had yeah, in a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got them back again now. Um, yeah, that is true. I get two extra bookings again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 100% drop. <laughs> Wait, your listenership? What? Your listenership? No, oh, my uh, DJ count. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, what have you been doing in uh, Canada the last few years? Preparing, <laughs> waiting, <laughs> biding my time until the return <laughs> of terror. <laughs> Not for world domination. And world domination. <laughs> and it all starts next weekend. And Jay Gore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Gore. <laughs> So, uh, when are you planning to return back to Netherlands again? Oh, winter probably. Do another January. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see. It's always good to be back, so. Yeah, but, you, you know, um, the first time that you were back, uh, you definitely had a, another kind of attitude. It's more like, uh, you're really happy to be back. But no nowadays, if you come back to the Netherlands, like, I just do my thing. I just go again. Is yeah, I found three weeks is kind of a good dose. Uh, you know, maybe one day it'll be longer, but now it's... I don't know. Keep the wheels moving. You know, I, there's other spots in the world, too. So, it's... Uh, you know, I like Holland, but there's other places as well. You know, rising flight prices doesn't help that, but... Uh, that is true. Anyway, we'll see. See how the world works itself out. You know, there during COVID, you know, I just learned to enjoy Canada. Learned to enjoy the great outdoors and the wilderness. And the, so whatever the situation, there's always something to enjoy from it. But I can certainly say that Holland is remarkable in many ways. Uh, most importantly, the biking and the fact that there's no SUVs. So for Americans like Candy Core or anyone else out there, Imagine you never see an SUV. I've not seen an. Oh no, I saw one truck today, and it stood out like a sore thumb. It filled up more than one lane. And but aside from that, imagine never seeing an SUV anywhere you go, and also not having to even deal with roads. You don't even have to go near cars. You ride a bike through historic villages and towns, over cobblestone roads, past lush green fields of cows and sheep past dikes and rivers with waving grass as the sun beats down upon the earth Keith. so yeah it's that's what i really like being from toronto where it's just non-stop cars everywhere you go it's sanity even if you live there and you're used to it you're not used to it because there's just cars everywhere, there's roads everywhere, there's traffic everywhere, speeding SUVs and pickup trucks and big massive vehicles on pothole-filled roads as you try to ride your bike and not get crushed like a mouse in a, uh, you know, 
between doors and speeding trucks. And yeah, it's not enjoyable. But what is enjoyable is biking in Holland. So if you're interested in nothing else, biking alone, you could spend a whole trip here just biking around Holland and that would be amazing. So Mint is asking a question. Uh, did mm -hmm. you learn Dutch? Yeah, I I praat in beetje Netherlands. I was here toch seven years in the buurt van Rotterdam, beetje by the centrum in Rotterdam, by Stinger ook. So yeah, I can snap it well. Maar ja, ik heb gehoord dat ik heb beetje in Rotterdamse accent. <laughs> no, you of, definitely don't of, 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 of uh, Guido said, you speak as a Turk, man. <laughs> of not. Uh, you do sound a little bit more like a Turkish person. And Turk. Well, often Canadians. But uh, <laughs> you know what the irony is? That Mint is asking you if you speak Dutch, but he's German. Ah. <laughs> you know that I speak Dutch, then? Was willst du? Uh, ah, ich habe gerade verschraubt, aber mein, mein, mein Deutsch muss wieder so kommen. Ja, aber das ist etwas anders. Aber es ist sehr, sehr, ähm, ähm, ja, gleich als äh, Niederlands. So, es ist äh, schwer, um die, die, äh, die zwei sind sehr, äh, it's easy to get them mixed together. So, wenn ich, ja, äh, wenn ich, ja. Äh, Anyway, <laughs> uh, never mind that. Yeah, also speak Sick English. Oh, yeah, français, c'est pas problème. Français, uh, apprend dans l'école en Canada. Alors, et uh, François, il va dire que c'est terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> il dit uh, bonjour, Yann, <laughs> ça va? Parce qu'il dit j'ai pas un bon accent en français. Uh, can you speak Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning though. Uh, no, it's like, um, yo quiero un taco, por favor. Dos cervezas. <laughs> Rapido. <laughs> you speak <laughs> other languages? Yeah, I just. Words in Polish. What? Kurwa. Yo, lepsze wróbę garści, nigo na dachu. And uh, gdzie jest kolonia Zygmunta? Proszę się prosto na prawo i lewo od hamnej kolonii Zygmunta. That's a touristy, uh, tourist, <laughs> tourist book stuff. But if anyone says anything back, then it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, Banana's asking you a Japanese? Mm, I know, arigato. When I was in Japan, that's the only word I'd use. Arigato. Arigato. That's arigato. Oh, I remember once, uh, Kyoto? They ignored me. I'm like Kyoto. Oh, but that's uh, that's all I knew in Japanese. No, Japan and China. That's you gotta draw the line somewhere. It's just like it makes your brain hurt. So. Uh, so Deaf minion is uh, asking, uh, what's the one place in the world you still want to go to? Hmm. Um. I don't know. I've kind of sought everything out. Already, uh, going back to Japan would be cool. Uh, I haven't been much else in Asia, so other places in Asia would be nice. I'm not interested in places like uh, Australia because it's like the hot version of Canada. It seems like it's a barren wasteland in the middle of nowhere. And everything <laughs> kills you there. Yeah, well, I don't care about that. It's just the barren wasteland part of it. I, not interested in barren wastelands. So Holland is good. Um, but where else? I don't know. Um, Thailand? Yeah, I wouldn't say no, but... Also no, say no to the lady boys? I'd say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a long flight. Uh, I'm going to Iceland on the way back. And that's always cool. Stop. Yeah, nice and there. Um, I don't know. If it's somewhere I really want to go, I would have gone already. But maybe South America, maybe. I don't know. It's just so far. And it's like, you got to pick your spots. You know, you can't just wander the world aimlessly forever. And 
kind of focus yourself a bit. Well, if you have all the money and the time in the world. Then you yeah, which I don't. So that's why I got to focus myself. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's that's a flight I could be spending going to Holland. Like I, I you know, I went to Guatemala a couple of times and saw Mako down there, but uh, you know, it's it's like, you know, you add up all these different places to go, and then you know, means you have time, less time for the other one. And now I've got my brother and my father both go to Mexico, so I got two to visit there. And I would like to go back to Guatemala at some point. You say he's online here? Evil minded? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know. I don't know yeah. Everywhere, everywhere is interesting to see. Argentina? Oh, well, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Like. What's interesting? What, what's interesting? But like I you? say, okay, for instance, you know, I've only been once to the west coast of Canada when I was 17, two weeks. I've been probably like 50 times to Holland because I went there and it's, it's not that interesting. And I don't know, you kind of got to focus on what you want to, where you want to go. You're going to just burn out at some point. Like you say, but even you know, even if you did have limited money and time, then you just spend your all your time wandering, see a lot of cool stuff, but you're not building up anything really. You know, you're not really. Uh, it's cool to to go around and travel, but it is good to have some kind of purpose, even if the purpose is the most flimsiest one of all. Just anything at all to give a reason to be there. Like well, when I was in Japan, it was for the extreme hard thing. So it was just for a DJ gig. Um, but that's a good reason enough to go. Or, you know, if there's some convention or something you're going to. It's good to have some kind of purpose to go because then there's the whole... Yeah, the whole uh, hero's return. Leaving the place of comfort. Uh, you're going out to somewhere new where you haven't... Uh, it's like a, the way Star Wars is laid out. You know, you, you leave the place of comfort, you go out to uh, beyond the New Horizons. Uh, you know, you meet mentors along the way, and you you have to go out and you have to claim the the magical uh, uh, you know, elixir of life, and then you have to bring it back to your your home. And so you have to have that cycle to really make it feel worthwhile. So you need to have some benefit that you're bringing back with you when you return so even if that's knowledge or an experience or it doesn't have to be a physical thing but you just uh, i went for this like, i'm going for this purpose i went i'm doing this purpose i did this purpose now i go back and i'm a better person than when i left it, you know you go anywhere in the world if you have that sort of mindset you'll return feeling like you've kind of leveled up in life and i think that's the main thing it's not really about where you go it's about i guess the reason you're going and the mindset you bring with you because again you can go anywhere for instance um in mexico they've got a lot of all you can eat you know all you can drink resorts and people go there and they just look zonked out they don't know what they're doing there why they're there and they're just there to get hammered and stay for a week and go back like they, they didn't really visit mexico they stayed in a resort the whole time and you know if that's what you want that's fine but it's you can do that almost anywhere. You could do that at home and make your own little beach, you know, as long as the weather's warm enough and such. But, but what I'm saying is that where are you going? It's like when people come to Holland. Usually, they don't even know they're coming to Holland. They say, "Oh, I'm going to Amsterdam," and I say, "Promise me you will not just visit Amsterdam. Promise me you'll go somewhere else in Holland other than just Amsterdam, because it's not the whole country." But people just think it's the whole country, and that's what I mean. Where they're not going to Europe. They're not going to Holland. They're going to Amsterdam specifically. And often it's what used to be in the old days. That was the only place they could go to smoke weed. So they're really going to smoke weed. Now, is that a valid reason to go on a trip? I don't know. You have to ask yourself that question if smoking weed is that important to you. But usually there's a better reason to go somewhere than just to smoke joints for a week or get hammered at a all-you-can-drink uh, uh, resort. You know, if you can find some high aim to achieve, uh, you know, visit some cultural artifact or even just visiting friends, I think is a worthy enough 
reason to go and return and come back with that experience. So yeah, going out and coming back with a valuable experience or a, a bit of knowledge is really the way to go. And it doesn't matter where in the world you go for that. You know, that depends on you of what's going to nourish you. Yeah, yeah th these are the, the kind of talks that I had hours and hours and hours with Blake. Uh, always before the studio, we uh, had to talk like this, and uh, yeah, every week. So yeah, um, but you're glad you, um, you're glad to be back here again. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. Every time I'm back here, I think, oh, God. <laughs> this is so much better in every way. And, and it's funny that that never seems to change. Uh, I never see some side that I didn't see before and think, oh, this is what Holland's really about. I've just been duped all this whole 20 years visiting Holland. <laughs> so, I don't know, what would it be? Uh, I know one time uh, when I was here for seven months straight, I didn't go back to Canada. The one thing I found, um, I wouldn't say lacking, but one thing that Canada did have better was wide open spaces to camping. And I remember going with Edward to center parks. That was sort of the Dutch camping experience. And it was a bit. It's different. It's kind of fun, but it's not. It's not at all like going to a cottage by a lake and it's wide open wilderness and canoeing. And, and often when I go back to visit Canada, back when I was living here full time, First thing I'd do, I'd lie on the floor and just stretch out. Like, oh, there's so much room. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, we waste a lot of space in Canada, especially Americans too. We waste a lot of space over there, guys. A lot of space. They're so practical here with their their uh, organization. And we could learn a bit from that because we just so wasteful. Like, Well, you know, the SUV issue is one thing, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's so inefficient. And it, it drives me crazy when I see this big, huge road and they don't even have a bike lane. You know, they can afford only a little bit of area. They'll like paint a line and that's their bike lane. When there's a, you know, there's so much space, they could have like massive things. In it. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> so I also saw uh, Oren asking, uh, how about Mongolia? Would you like to visit? Yeah, I've had a reason. <laughs> it's like that's the thing is like okay all right i'm going to mongolia all right yeah mongolia let's go i get out all right Whew, yeah mongolia yep uh, melopon saying a lot of <sighs> green space here in canada and it's just for lawns for grass me yeah yeah for a lot of people yeah you can make a garden too but yeah no the lawns that's not even the worst fraction of it all it's the you know, it's a way they'll build more lanes for highways when they already have a bunch of lanes and think, oh, we got to help the traffic. Let's build more roads. Never work. This makes more traffic. Yeah, it's also because you have so many uh, cars and stuff. Yeah, big, big cars. Uh, oh, yeah, Mongolia. Or I guess. Mm. But, you know, if I really had some calling Mongolia, if I was somehow got deep into the history of Genghis Khan and they wanted to see where he was from. But, like, I mean, it, it takes a lot out of you traveling, by the way. It's like, not only is it expensive, but jet lag and then, you know, you're out of your routine. That's one main thing. It's like, you get into a daily routine when you're just living normally. Then when you travel, not only it's like, okay, I got to book off this whole chunk of time, so I'm going to be gone. So nothing I do that's regular am I going to be able to do in this next few weeks. Uh, and yeah, a lot of people can't do that because there's something they have to do at that time regularly that can't allow them to be away for that chunk. And if you are going away for those chunks, it means you can't have something that you have to be there regularly for. So it also means that you're limiting yourself when you return as well. So it's tricky, like say, you know, you've got pets or something or, you know, any kind of regular work that you can't be away from. It's, it's, it's 
you know, it, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of um, managing your lifestyle around. So that's why it should be somewhere that really calls you. Um, you know, not to say that it wouldn't be cool to go to Mongolia, but I just don't know what I would do there. What would be the first thing? I don't know. What would be the first thing you do if you land in Mongolia? It's like, imagine that the plane just landed. You're out of the airport. All right. Let's go drink some yak milk. I don't know. <laughs> Ideas? <laughs> what do you do? Where are you? Mongolia. Okay, Mongolia. I don't know. I just picture wide, flat open spaces, some guys on their horses, you know, blowing on a horn or something. I just think uh, Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> that's how limited my knowledge of Mongolia is. I, I think that's that's one thing though. Is it it destroys your? That's one of the best things though about traveling. It destroys your preconceptions of a place, and it gives you a much deeper uh, insight into what, a, what the world is about. Because you start off with your stereotype of the little spatterings of knowledge you've collected. Like when I first uh, before I went to Holland the first time, I looked at the map. And I, I thought Rotterdam was in England. I like, oh, I'm going to want to go to Rotterdam. I go, it's in England. I like, oh, wait, no, it's in the Netherlands. And I just looked at it. Like, the Netherlands. <laughs> well, I know Hall Holland has, you know, clogs and, and windmills and all that and cheese and, you know, um, but what is the Netherlands? You know, I knew Beetlejuice in the Netherworld. Is, is there <laughs> sandworms? Is it a vortex you spiral into when you get there? You know, so, so yeah, it gives you a much deeper uh, view of uh, places. Like I, I went to Ukraine a few years ago in 2019, and I went for an art uh, art class. You know, that was my excuse to go. But you know, now I have sort of a personal connection to that so you know, when i see all this stuff happening now it's it's much deeper because it's like it makes it real it's like oh that's a real place i was there if you see on the news or something you see a place where you've been it's like oh my god i was just there and so it, it connects you much deeper with the world around you and the people in that world too because then you can relate to people better especially if you meet someone from that country and oh i've been to your country oh and where have you been oh, i've been here oh and you know, you just get a much deeper sense of, of just everything, not just, not just that country as well, but you just understand the way the world works a lot better and how people are. And you realize that everyone is essentially the same fundamentally, you know, aside from different languages and customs and things like that, but fundamentally everybody's the same. It really teaches you about how world is and how the world has been history and and then it gives you insight on how to be yourself so it's one of the best things you can do i'd say it's better than going to university or anything else just traveling it's very very educational in a deeper way than just knowledge like book learning is being able to recite uh uh you know whatever you've memorized from a textbook it's uh yeah it gives you insight gives you a broader depth of understanding yep oh uh, definitely you uh, said that the first thing what you do uh, if you would go to mongolia is to find a concert of the who but <laughs> <laughs> the who plays in mongolia yeah uh, uh well the who also comes to the netherlands yeah. because kim and me we went to the concert like yeah. uh, in uh, wh where was it uh tilburg in tilburg last uh, november and they're here like once or twice a year so if you want to go see the who you can do it closer than uh with yeah, you can to probably home. do it closer than Mongolia. That's the only place they're playing. Then you gotta be a pretty big Who fan, I guess. <laughs> who? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, uh, looking at the time, uh, we uh, still have a few announcements to do. So yeah, uh, Blake, um, uh, any last words would you want to uh, mention to? Yeah, awesome. Uh, just checking if there's any questions, uh, comments. Is that Mongolia or is that Tibet? Uh, sing along with the songs. Yeah, that's the uh, first time that came to Holland. It was uh, World Cup 98. 
And you know, and they're singing all these soccer songs and stuff, and uh, uh, they'd hop, haul, and hop everywhere. And yeah, it's a lot of fun, even if you don't know what they're singing. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that was that really just struck me how, how much fun it was when everybody was cheering for the same team in Toronto. Everyone cheers for whatever country they came from originally or their parents came from so everybody's cheering for different countries canada's not really a country that's a thing canada is more of a place canada is a commonwealth it's a actually <laughs> it, it used to be called the dominion of canada and i think that's a better name for it the dominion it's a dominion it's a land that's you know managed there's it's a domain it's not a country a country has its own language and culture and history and art and music and Canada doesn't really have that. It has whatever America's feeding us. If Canada has its own stuff, it has to first go to the United States and then get sold back to us. So that's not really your own culture then. All the singers, all the actors, they go first to Hollywood. Or, you know, like Justin Bieber and uh, Celine Dion and uh, all the... Who are the... Taylor Swift. Nicole. Yeah, who are all the and the big actors and everything. Anyway, they're, they all go first to the States. They get famous and then they're... They're lauded in Canada. So yeah, Canada is a strange place because it doesn't really have its own identity as such. The Quebecois have more of an identity, but they've uh, they've had to really struggle for that over the years. So anyway, I'm off on a tangent again. Uh, yeah, I know. That's true. Quebec and the French. That's what I mean. When I go to Quebec, it feels like another country. So they're true in that respect that Quebec... They didn't separate, but it does feel like another country. Uh, so it and it does have its own culture and music too, which is also cool. But it's just so far to drive. <laughs> Everywhere is far. <laughs> it's six hours from Toronto just to Montreal, and that's kind of the entry point to Quebec. Well, six hours with a car. Yep, and it's like eleven hours to Quebec City, and Quebec is a huge, very empty uh, province. So you have Quebec City, Montreal, and a lot of empty space in between that. Six hours with a car from here, then you're probably halfway France. And, well, you can uh, go to Berlin. Berlin. Oh, yeah, you could yeah. go pretty much to Berlin in the time it takes from Toronto to Montreal, the two biggest cities closest together in Canada. So, yeah, and it's a long, empty drive in between that. Long, going straight, lots of farms and trucks and more trucks and, you know, gas station stops and... You, Go and get a coffee back on the road. Just go, 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 go. On and on and on and on. You know. Yeah. No, Holland's nice. Yeah, poutine. Quebec. Quebec produces a lot of culture, actually. Yeah. Um, oh, Celine Dion. She's from Quebec. Is that culture? They have moose. Yeah. I, okay, I had this whole debate with my mom. She was saying the same thing. So we have maple syrup and Tim Hortons and hockey. I'm like, that's not really culture. Those are attributes. You know, you have, yeah, moose. <laughs> so so what, if we didn't have moose, it wouldn't be Canada? Like, how many people even see moose in Canada? I've seen a moose like three times in my life, and that's going into the wilderness, going camping and stuff. Majority of Canadians have never seen a moose. And yeah, maple syrup. But the Americans have maple syrup too. They have it in Vermont. So that's not really... No, that's And that's from the trees. It's from the maple trees. It's not because the people of Canada are, are creating the trees to create the syrup. Uh, what else? More trucks. Lots of trucks. Are you from Canada, Oren? <laughs> uh, he lives close by. He's from the state of New York. Okay, I think I met him. Did I meet him? Was he with Candy Core? Nope. Okay, it's another guy. But yeah, he's from upstate New York. He knows the gist of it. Yeah, Montreal is pretty cool. They have a bit of culture there. Uh, yeah, Montreal's good music. Yeah, of all, Montreal's my favorite city in Canada. I lived there for two years, but it's hard to kind of make a go of it there unless you're native French. Even if you just speak French, it's not enough. You got to be native Quebec. Uh, Texas. I was in Dallas uh, a couple of years ago. 
that had its own style. Like I kind of liked how straightforward people were. They really told you as it is. It was in Dallas. Did the whole uh, JFK uh, sightseeing tour. Went down a whole rabbit hole with that. Went to the grassy knoll and stood there for an hour and like, yeah, right here. Anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah. As I uh, mentioned before, we still have uh, a few more announcements to make, and then it's also almost the end of the show. So, still last some uh, last words, everyone. Uh, great to be in Holland. Uh, gotta go see Jody on Saturday at Legends, Legends of Terror Three: Old School Terror Never Dies, <laughs> featuring. J Core by Neo Dash Xerox and many others. That's Club Broadway in Erp, the Netherlands, this Saturday. Be there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, League. So yeah, um <laughs> you're as... actually gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Def Minions is gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. But seriously, now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Def. Yeah, the Def Minions driving with us. That's that's motor. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I. The, uh... No, I don't think that random other people will be there. Oh, probably all around the world. Yeah. But like Erp, who the hell goes to Erp? There's nothing yeah. driving to Erp. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's the middle yeah. of fucking nowhere. An hour and a half. That's pretty close by. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but here in the Netherlands, not everybody has a car. But then again, everybody yeah. has a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> So yeah, uh, for JCL Prime 4, we have Laser Emoto, DJSBZ Themes, Dysphasia, Mega Curse, Dub Yuka, Cascus Crusher, T Dash, or T, Nida Xerox, Prime Dected, Mo, Shingo DJ. I mentioned we still have uh, a few more announcements. Um, in total, we have 15 artists, so we have three more announcements. The first one is going to be, let's see, uh, how can I say something like this? Um, I think that one of his favorite animals is a pig. <laughs> um, I think they do. Very, uh, rabbit. Oh, already banana. I, I wouldn't have been able to answer that. No, but, but, but the thing is, uh, like banana, he already guessed it. <laughs> very niche audience. <laughs> <laughs> so we have <laughs> um, C type playing at JCL Prime Fall. So C type oh. is one of the, the artists I am uh, a huge fan of. And uh, he was also one of the very first artists that uh, participated for uh, for Primefall and sent in the mix already. Uh, only uh, he is one of the few artists that I already need to postpone twice. Postpone, postpone. Uh, so I'm you've talked about him and his pig mess uh, enough that Jacob plus pig is seat time to him. <laughs> So yeah, okay, then we have the next artist. Let's see, what can we say about this next artist? Here's the question. Why do you have Uh Yeah, that is a good question. Why does he have Ben? Um I think that is to keep his nose intact, yes. And he I I think he also loves mummies. Just a and <laughs> maybe he's a, a mummy pig, another one lord this gold. Another Japanese history. I have no idea what's going on. I had a lot of them. <laughs> what? 
That, that movie lost in translation. That's okay. yeah. Lo the whole time, the guy just. What's going on? <laughs> lost in translation. Was that a movie? Yeah, yeah you haven't seen it. Oh, that's uh, Bill Murray's in Japan. Okay. And it's him getting just kind of like overwhelmed by Japanese culture, and he's just like, "What the hell is on here?" It's the ultimate. I was like, "That is Japan." You're just like, "What?" Oh, what the hell? So, I need to see it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'll like it. What else have you seen that? Yeah. There we go. Pro, pro, Crobat. Crobat scene. Yeah. Lost in translation. It's a good. One. It's an old. One. So. Then we have the next artist. Uh, what can I say about this artist? Um, uh, that's too easy. This, this is just too easy. Um, the, the, the thing is, the questions what I have in my head makes it too easy. No, uh, because I think a lot of people also know the answer. So I I, I try to divert it a little bit. Mega curse. No, it's not me. I, I already got announced. Um trying trying to figure out a difficult <laughs> uh answer. Uh Okay, uh, although that this artist is also uh, pretty popular within the J-Core scene, this artist also has different names attached to it. Like the full name and the addresses. Um, I, I know the full name, but I'm not going to tell the full name. It's a very kind of speedy vibe that he likes in Tokyo. Ah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a good one. We said to you, no, is no wrong wave crusher. No, it's not midi. Hmm. Uh, no, it's not Cobario, it's not Red Ogre. No, that was too easy. Oh! <laughs> so, no, it's not DJ Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Jody does the best. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> so, for Prime 4, we also have DJ Sharpno on board. Does it get more Boomer card than this? Um, one of the, the things about uh, that I really want to do uh, Prime 4, that was even... Um, that, that was actually after Equinox. I had... Uh, some kind of road that I really want to go to, but before I can go to uh, Prime 4, I need to go through uh, different stages first. So we had uh, Outrun and we have Summer Wave. And now with Prime 4, uh, everything falls in place. Uh, as we're going back into time, as you can see in the, the promotional video. Yeah, uh, DJ Sharno is pretty much the... Um, <laughs> the, the boomer <laughs> the, the, the biggest boomer core of the event indeed so yeah um he was also the first person i asked to play for prime fall and um uh, yeah really happy for uh for sharp null to to join us but then we still have one more announcement and this is also the announcement that uh, it, let's see uh, how can i say this um 
This is an artist that that pretty much stopped. Uh, but I asked the artist if uh, if something can be arranged. Dev Minion, it, um, this is a J-Core show, it's not, <laughs> not Canadian Speedcore. <laughs> um, yeah, they're definitely not made for the outside world. Um, the, the, the thing is, uh, this, uh, this artist is not active anymore, but especially for this event, this artist, he, he accepted. <laughs> no, it's not another redacted. Um, and I think that I am also the first one to have this artist for for, uh, for the online shows. Uh, first, is it Japanese artist? Yes, Mega Curse is not Technicium. And bananas also not Kentafez. Um, the artist himself is still active in the music. This artist also still regularly releases music. Crobat dubbed it was worst. Still hoping. Ah, definitely not. No. Uh, but first was also not spy. Uh, Death Minion. Uh, I did ask a speed freak, but uh, due to uh, time limits, he is not able to uh, come this time. But I did ask him for Biochip C. Uh, Melon is also not level 4. Uh, let's see. Another tip what I can give is that uh, I have spy. I have talked about this artist on several occasions. Crobat is not Korakira. Because Korakira is active. Well. Guess what? <laughs> so, especially for JCL Prime Fall. Uh, Akira Dev is coming out of retirement for once. <laughs> so Akira Dev is uh, coming back for this show only. No, he's not, he's not a zombie. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the story goes um, that I talked to Ko Akira for uh, if we are able to get Akira Dev for a prime fall and yeah he accepted and uh, yeah we are having Akira Dev <laughs> so surprise <laughs> So yeah, um, that was pretty much the whole lineup, and with this I can also show the full flyer, if I can find the flyer. So, once again, we have Akira Death, Casket Crusher, C-Type, DJ SBZ, DJ Sharpno, Dubyuka, Dysphasia, Lazy Emoto, Mega Cursed, Mo, New Dash Xerox, Prime Dected, Shingo DJ, T, and Teens. The 24th of June 2023, JCL Prime Fall, hashtag BoomerCore. Sadly, we still don't have the. Uh, how, how you call it? Um. Uh, we don't have the proper advertisement yet, but let's show it one more time.
19th of November, but the 26th of June. Yeah, um, as uh, Krobus says, it's definitely a true uh, Boomer Core party. As we are going back into time, uh, yeah, uh, with this phase, uh, we, um, we are entering really strange worlds with Outrun. Uh, and then Summer Wave, the... the uh, when uh, outrun, we we have the dark wastelands, uh, post -apoc uh, post apocalyptic, uh, apocalyptic, post apocalyptic world. Then we go into uh, JCL uh, summer wave, where everything is wavy. Uh, it's all strange. It's a strange world. And now with Primefall, uh, and uh, and now with Primefall, we are also going back into time to. <laughs> to the primeval time of J Core. Banana, wait, was that confusing the Neo Dash logo uh, shaped flower in the bushes? Is there a Neo Dash shape in the bushes? I don't see anything like that. <laughs> uh, then I gotta check out uh, the video later again. So, once again. The twenty sixth of um, the twenty sixth of June, Akira Def, Casket Crusher, C Type, DJ SBZ, DJ Sharpnel, Dubuka, Dysphasia, Laser Emoto, Mega Cursed, Mo, Yodar Xerox, Prime Dected, Shingo DJ, T, and Themes. Yeah, TMFZ. So yeah, I hope everybody uh, loves uh, this lineup. Uh, this was the um, the event that I have been looking forward to for one and a half year now. Is one and a half, yeah, one and a half year. Been looking forward to this because I have been planning this event already after, um, just right after uh, Equinox. So yeah, there was had a whole. Um, you know, the whole uh, line that still need to follow, whole storyline that needed to be followed. Why do I keep saying the 26th? It's the 24th of June. Sorry. It's the 24th of June. <laughs> they would completely freak your beam. Yeah, let's see. Skip to where Jane lands into the new time. So uh, Harley uh, is uh, still creating the new uh, trailer for it. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to show it next week. But for now, this is how it is. So yeah, Harley is a busy boy. Uh, Harley is definitely really busy. Uh, I also told Harley that um, it is going to be a lot of grinding now again. Uh, let's see. There. Oh, there's also some other kind of promotion. So it's a quick promotion, but Rapid Stomp is happening on the 10th of June. So let's. Uh, Let's see which artists are playing over there. Because it it went way too fast. Wait, uh, the video is muted because I see the sound coming up. Oh, wait. Uh no, there, there should be sound of the music. So, let's see. Uh, we have Magna Drake, DJ SBZ, Daibaka Hatsu Nyo. We have Kakepon, Orin, Index. We have Mattress and Dojin Ronin. At twitch.tv slash Arforosol DJ Rapidstom GX. So go visit Rapidstom. Just go and visit. Oh, what time is it? It's J Core lifetime. I'm, I'm here today to tell you about. Just listen. Just listen. I've got this. Um, 
if we all just have a listen right now, I think you'll, I think you'll just agree. Um, look, look, this is it. This is some good quality J core. This isn't some bread and cheese we've slapped on a plate. This is, this is the real stuff. There's only one J core. And it's right here, right now, in this box. There's J Core Life. J Core Life's in the park. We found it. There it is. There it is. Yeah, currently no sign of J Core. I think we've got about three days worth of provisions. Um, we haven't got any weapons. Also, tomorrow is the last Tuesday of the month, and you know what that means? Yes, that definitely means this. Thanks to Sam. Tomorrow is the last Tuesday of the month, so that also means Cheesy Tuesday. We are having Gabba Disco Night Live tomorrow. Um, we have, of course, a new release. And yeah, hopefully see you there tomorrow. Uh, as for today, yeah, uh, this was pretty much uh, today's uh, show. We have been listening to uh, Buchagi Speedcore from Psychophil Records. It's available on Bandcamp. Um, only sadly, this CD is <laughs> not available anymore. Um, especially for you people, I have opened this CD, ripped it because I didn't have it digitally. Um, so normally, I wouldn't rip my CD. Of, I, I wouldn't uh, take off the uh, the seal from my CD for anyone else. I was I will always give a hard no, but especially for this show, I did open it. So that is uh, some worth already dropping down. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is there. We still have one more track to go, of course. Um, yeah, it's an uh, amazing city. Let's see. For next week, we don't have anything planned yet. Um, what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear something happy? You want to hear something hard? You want to hear something fast? Something slow? Um, yeah, what do you want to hear? Give me a suggestion and then I can go probably pick something up. <laughs> Death meaning the Square Enix CD. Uh, this is not really Jayco, right? Like, I, I wouldn't mind opening it. But this is J-Core. <laughs> sort of, okay. Um, let's see. So I have the CD now here. Uh... Mr. Lonzo could have thought too. Uh, still in the planning? Um, Mega Curse, Melodic Domination CD. Uh, I still don't have the CD, so I'm not going to play that. I don't have the CD or I don't have the, uh, the digital files for it. And no, I am not going to play anybody's, anybody else's rips. I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's see. Death meaning if you want to keep it sealed, bring a USB with the digital files. Um, well, Death meaning, um, yeah, do that then. Let's see, Crobat, Speedball, Speedball. Um, well, I know the Death Minion has been asking me to do this already quite a long time. 
So instead of J-Core, uh, we can do this and just listen what it is. Uh, I do like Final Fantasy. <laughs> so yeah, let's... Uh, let's see what this is. This is from Square Enix. So if we have a drop in viewers, we all know who to blame. <laughs> So yeah, um, okay, then next week we'll be listening to uh, more SQ. It's a Square Enix uh, album, because uh, definitely keep asking me to uh, play this. So yeah, uh, then we can definitely try it once. Um, as for Speedball and for the Coup d'etat 2, um, we can plan that in. Um, let's see... Because there is also another show coming up soon. Let's see. Uh, the, okay. So, okay, what, what we are going to do now, uh, not now, is that next week we will be listening to this album. That is on the, the 5th of June. Then the 12th of June, uh, we can do this. The Coup d'etat Warrior, a Coup d'etat 2. <laughs> because of uh, Mr. Lonsdale. Um, the 19th, I have another show planned. Uh, cannot talk about that yet. And then the, the 26th of June, we can go into uh, the very first Tanoshi CD that I have. Or at least uh, the very first Tanoshi CD that I bought is the Tanoshi Carnival. But since uh, this is going to be a, a two CD um, yeah, 2 CD uh, thingy. It's probably going to be in two weeks. So the 26th of June and 3rd of July. So I am going to line this up so uh, that I don't forget. But if there are uh, other special shows uh, coming in between, then I am going to postpone one of those. So yeah, uh, other than that, if you haven't done so yet uh come follow like subscribe and the socials facebook instagram twitter youtube also have a spreadsheet for merchandise uh, where new merchandise will be up and running in a couple of days or weeks just uh, for prime for of course uh we have an amazing discord server with a lot of artists and a lot of uh, community members uh, patreon even wants to financially support me even more uh, and all you can all find uh, the links at linktree slash near the Xerox or as what Banana did, uh, jcore.live socials. Uh, just go click on one of those links if you've done so yet. Also for Discord, you can go click on the links. Uh, also saving up for DJ Deck, uh, we are now uh, almost on 10% of the total amount. Um, not sure if this is the total amount, but this is just uh, up until the end of the year and I'll see what happens then. Um, yeah, there's nothing else more to add than uh, to everybody. Thank you very much for joining in today's show. Um, yeah, I really hope that everybody um, liked the, the show today. Uh, amazing album. First time I heard. <laughs> really like it. It's uh, definitely happy and hard. Uh, we had 15 artists for JCL Prime for. We had a little talk with Plague. Um, yeah. And let's do a quick shout out to all uh, the chatters in here. T Dash, Mint, Tom CXR, Death White, Topsu, uh, Resetature, Mega Curse, Crobat, Death Minion 909, Aversal DJ, I'm the Banana, Melon Pon, Antique, and Mr. Lonsdale. Also, to all you lurkers out there, thank you very much for joining here in today's show. I hope 
everybody enjoyed uh, as much as I enjoy giving these shows uh, to you people out there. Let's see now, who shall we raid? Uh, if somebody has a suggestion who we can raid, then we can raid. Uh, and otherwise, I just go raid a random person, I guess. So, if anybody has a suggestion, please do so. And uh, hopefully see you tomorrow at Gabber Disco Night Live. And if not, see you next week at J Court Live. You want to know, Lee? J Court. Talk show here on Twitch. So we are going to listen to tomorrow with Harmoth Harmatophilia. And then this is the end of the show. So everybody, good night. <laughs>
So I also forgot to uh, mention that um, upcoming June there's also a uh, the Beats on the Friday and Dokumi as well. But uh, what we are going to do with the community members is that uh, we want to uh, have uh, a schnitzel party on the Friday evening together. So uh, I will open up an, in the announcements uh, with the invite to who wants to join us uh, and who is on the um, uh, who wants to be on the schnitzel party on the Friday uh, evening before Panda Beats, uh, so we can reserve uh, yeah the amount of people who is coming. So as Vanessa, go to uh, hashtag Discord and keep an eye out on the announcement tag. So hopefully see you there as well because I'm really hungry for some schnitzels. And now let's go raid Lolly 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 Lolly